on a supermodel pose. I mean, real friend Winnie. Hey babe, so today I'm going to show you guys how I got this gorgeous bob lock wig. You guys have been really feeling this technique and I wanted to just pop in and show you guys that you can do it on a wig as well if you wanted to go ahead and have it be able to last for a while. So make sure that you're following me on Instagram so that you can see everything first and let's get into it. So I'm starting off with this wig. I've already cut it to about 8 inches. I just prefer to have a little less hair to work with. It's a little unnecessary if you're working with a wig. <laughs> And as you can see here, I'm parting out about an inch around the perimeter on all of the sides. This just allows for a bit of customization and I find that the extra curls just make it look a little bit more natural and lived in. Being that it is a wig, it's not really going to loosen up if that makes sense. So by having these curls out in the back, it just makes it look really natural and kind of like, I don't care, but I'm just cute. You know what I'm saying? It's fire. So I've parted out all around the back. And now we're going to start working on the actual base braids. So here I have some color 30 Marley hair. Um, usually I would use like a 1B, but I'm going to use 30 just so you guys can really see what I'm doing. Now I'm parting off this first row. And typically I like to make the first row into three to four sections. I went ahead and did four for this wig. Now I'm using a piece of the Marley hair and I'm braiding it in at the root, leaving a little bit of like slack, maybe about a half an inch at the root. And the reason why I like to braid in the Marley hair is just because the wig hair is a bit fine and the Marley hair makes the locks really hold and last. And you want your wig to last a really long time. So that's a really important step that I like to do, but you don't really have to. So now when I get to the front, as you can see, I'm kind of rounding the parts out a bit more. I want them to look really, really natural. In the back, it really doesn't matter because you won't be able to see. But in the front, I am rounding the parts a little bit. Making sure that I'm still staggering them so that the hair looks really, really full. Kind of like that brick pattern. You want one braid coming down in between the bottom two. So for the locks, I'm using a similar technique that I did for my lock bob video. I'll go ahead and link that here if you want to see. But I'm crocheting in one piece of hair and I'm braiding it in just for added security. And then I'm going to crochet another piece to the root. I'm overlapping this one with the braid and I'm holding it taut on one end and using the other end to wrap around everything together. Now usually I only leave about one to two inches as like slack left over to hold on to. But because I want things to be ombre, I start wrapping where the hair becomes black. And that way I have a little bit more control over where the color falls. Now once you get to about the length that you want your lock to be, you want to just kind of check it every now and then. And once I have it where I want, I just go ahead and start wrapping back up. Once I get to the end, I tie a knot around the hair. And then we're going to just crochet through one more piece and do the whole thing again. And the second piece is really to add some hold to the lock. The first wrap really just creates the base. It kind of helps you decide the length and everything, but this second wrap is what really holds everything together. You can even go in and wrap with a third piece if you want super thick locks, but I went ahead and stopped at the two. For a more medium to large look, this wig was for a client and she loved it. It came out so cute on her. All of the information for the hair will be down below in the description box. I ordered this hair off Amazon and it's really, really pretty. I like it. But as I've stated before, you can use this technique with pretty much any texture of hair that you'd like. I prefer to use a curly or afro texture because I like the way it looks, but it's up to you.
and for a little added security on that second piece I also crochet the end through the lock because again this is a wig so it ain't no tightening up girl it is what it is you want it to be very very sturdy Now I've pretty much finished everywhere else. This is my last lock, so I'm just going to head and crocheting that piece through and loosely braiding it with the braid that we created with the Marley hair earlier, just for a little added security. Then I'm fluffing that second piece out, crocheting it through, holding the blonde part in my hand and then wrapping around with the black to make sure that the ombre looks perfect. And I'm kind of fluffing it out as I go as well because the fluffier the hair is the more it covers and the less you'll have to actually wrap so I like to fluff it out quite a bit. And once we've wrapped to our desired length you just wrap back up and now I'm going in with the second piece. Or thickness curl and again once you get to the end you just wrap back up and to secure it I'm doing a double knot and then crocheting the end through the lock and this is the final look as you can see we threw in some layers the ombre looks gorgeous and I love how the blonde is kind of peeking through throughout the wig it almost gives it like a balayage vibe once these locks kind of frizz up a bit, they're going to be even prettier, but I'm obsessed with this wig as is. I hope that you guys really enjoyed this video. The link to where you can purchase this wig as well will be down below in the description bar. And I'll see you guys in my next video. I love you guys. Bye-bye.